Don't load it. Just leave it alone. <laughs> Don't worry, this hate game is saves, remember? It has saves. I'm telling you, it has saves. So yes! Welcome back to freaking... Oh god, as soon as I can not screw this whole thing up. Okay. I think we're good. Yep. Welcome back to Super Mario All-Stars, finally. Yep, we're back to erase this file. Yes, brilliant. Erase it again. No! Please, oh god, don't. Don't do Wait, it. why is it working like this? Yeah, it's weird how it works. You gotta hit, like, different buttons. That's weird. But yep, just... I think you just have to hit start or something to actually <coughs> go into it once you, uh, have a level selected. But yep, you can see we're on my Switch now! Because the other one got save stated back to, uh... <laughs> also, um... The thing is, also, my... Uh, whatchamacallit subscription expired as well, so we need to fight that. Oh, shit! I wouldn't be able to do anything. I I'm see. basically gonna eventually join with a friend on that front to actually have... In addition to, hopefully, the NES and SNES stuffs, Finally, maybe duty. <laughs> you um, said duty. Ah! <laughs> 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 yeah, I didn't for I'm sorry! Oh, I'm sorry! Please don't hurt me! What's that? Hurt you more? Thoria? Got it. No, wait! <laughs> Thoria? God damn it! But yep, Lost Levels has finally returned! At least for us, it's feeling like it's been a while since we last played this. God damn you, Lost Levels. I'm just remembering you. It's also weird sometimes Koopa shells flip upside down. Oh, I remember the Red Piranha planes, so I only stopped coming up here above them. Ugh. Nice reminder of the torture we've been through. Invisible blocks and dickish enemies all put together in one of the most painful but lovable Mario experiences. How do you love this? I find my ways. <laughs> now what's worse, this or X7? Mmm. That is a good question. Or by some people's logic, this or Mega Man base. I would take Mega Man base over this. Same here. Because at least that game is forgiving. And we're playing the All-Stars version. At least it's not the NES version. Played the whole game eight times, with continues only working for the beginning of the world, and not just the beginning of the level. But either way, it's painful all the same. As long as we don't use a warp, we're good. God, I hope we'll be fine. But yep, it's really like an interesting year for Mario this year. Yeah. Well, maybe. The last major thing that Mario's got on his sleeve is the remake. Oh, Thousand Year Door, you mean? Yeah. Ah! And Princess Peach got a game which was decent. But I mean, it's exactly what you'd expect from yeah, a game like nothing special, but it's. I haven't played it because I honestly don't really care for another it. Another simple plot. It's weird that Good Feel, the first game they made is Good Feel, or at least the first like Nintendo-based one, was well, probably the hardest one they made. And every game since has been really easy, like difficulty-wise. The first Nintendo game they did was a uh, Wario Land Shake It, which is. Surprisingly difficult. Isn't that the Wii one? Yup. It's one of the hand-drawn animations. I would still say that's a damn good Wario game. I haven't played it in a very long time because I tried to find all the secrets in some of the levels. I realized there are unlockable stages that were even harder than the main game stages. I was just like, oh god! I struggle with the main game as it is! <laughs> like, yeah, if you're good... It feels very... It seems like somebody, if you're good to the Wario Land series, you would enjoy Wario Land Shake It. I think it enhances a lot of what Wario Land 4 did. Because if I remember, I think Wario Land 4 is the one you get, like, a treasure at the end of the stage and they have an escape sequence to get back to the entrance of the level or whatever. I think all Wario Land Shake It stages are like that. Hmm. Because I guess that's part of the thing they added with treasure hunting. Then again, I only know like Warland 4 because I played one stage. Or Warland Shake It. They also had challenged Warland Shake It for like getting enough treasure in the stage. Yeah, wind is fun. Yep. 
You gotta do a running jump and hope the weight will carry you. Have to go one of the lower steps and try to jump to the top one and just run from there, probably. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out what the place one is. We're back to remembering how Mario's physics works. And they're rough in the olden days. It wasn't until Mario 3, they really refined a lot of it. At least for the most part, they refined it. Hey, it pretty much has been since Mario 3 or Mario World, the Mario physics and 2D games have been basically well established and the same. Oh! Oh, what? <laughs> I thought I could climb up it! Well, I can climb the wall. Yep, we have Mario Wonder last year. And then we have the Thousand Year Door remake this year, along with Luigi's Mansion 2 HD. I'd be excited for that, but I already, I already played Luigi's Mansion 2, so I don't have the motivation to replay again. I keep forgetting there's another project we technically do, Luigi's Mansion 1, because I do have the GameCube version. I'll just spoil Like, I'm not the biggest fan of Luigi's Mansion like everybody else. I get it. Movies. It's a very short... I like it, but it's definitely not the kind of game I see myself replaying. Yeah. Yeah. 3 is probably the best one, because yeah. it mixes elements of 1 and 2 in there. It had a lot more enemy variety and, like, bosses like 2 did. But it goes back to, like, a single mansion expert... Like, I do like... Thing. I played all three of them, but it's just, like... I don't know. I like the games, but I don't love them like some people do. Yeah, I get it. So yeah. Like, eh. One is short and sweet. If you haven't played one, it's a nice, it's a nice pleasurable trip to go through. I played all three of them, so yeah. I have. Yeah, yeah, you have the 3DS version, right? Yep. So, so you I'm... have to deal with Gooigi in that one. i never seen Gooigi, to be honest. Uh, maybe that's the co-op multiplayer. I'm gonna say, I think that's the co-op. That's right. It's a special... I still find it's so weird. They put that in the 3DS remake... Or 3DS port, I guess. Luigi's Mansion 1. To tease a concept that was going to be used in 3. And now it has me wondering what Next Level Games is doing next. Again. Because they went back to their striker stopping grounds. With mixed results. Yeah. The well, core game seems fine, it's just... Nintendo's involved in the way they want to do all their sports games lately. All their Switch ones have had content basically set aside for the future because we gotta keep players invested to come back later. Even though the core game should be enough to do that. Yeah, I'm about to say, like, if your core game isn't good at the beginning... I will, I will say, at least of all those that they did, Super, all Super Rush was probably the best executed of the three. Yeah. Yeah, the three. Oh, that jump's gonna be brutal. And then this one. Right, I forgot this stage is long. Invisible blocks to find again! So they're probably gonna go top of that one and find another. Yep, you typically want to jump on the edge of one. Just hopefully find another if you need to climb a high wall. Fun! Aren't freaking invisible blocks great? <laughs> Honestly, that's like the biggest thing about this game that I really hate is just the, the overuse of the invisible blocks. Oh, I think I think that's otherwise. The most... Honestly, I like honestly I don't think this game is terrible. It's just the invisible blocks are just that, that the is, worst part. I think that is the most hated concept of this. It's just like it's the thing that's basically it seems like an impassable thing with no hints as to where you have to jump to make the jump actually possible. Although the backwards warps can be dicks too. Yeah. Redoing stages, that's not the worst thing. Especially since the game's still relatively short. It's just, it doesn't feel short. Yeah, <laughs> it's just this You're thing. always dying! Had to redo these stages because we keep dying. Because we love to hurt ourselves. Ugh. At least this game doesn't have fucking auto runner concepts. Yeah. Then again, not many platformers did that back in the day with, like, auto-running things. I mean, the auto-running thing wasn't really a super big thing. Maybe in the arcades, I guess you could say, because, you know... Oh, uh, yeah, I guess. They were basically meant to throw you into obstacles you had to base react to, and that was... Almost when they really threw that. 
You basically had to react to things on like a split second notice. Yeah. They made it super hard, so you had to drain all your fucking quarters. Microtransaction before microtransactions. Just playing the game's a microtransaction! Fuck! At least thankfully modern renditions of those games, if they keep that whole life and quarter system, they basically just have a button that's like, here, give yourself more quarters. <laughs> thankfully modern ports of arcade games have been very gracious that. Oh! There's probably a warp up there, but we're not trying to take those. And remember, there's a world we'll be able to visit if we take any warps at all. Yep. Let's just keep going. Because this game's an asshole. <laughs> so how many levels are there again? It's the eight, and then there's four more after this, or six more? Well, it's four regularly. If you don't use any warps, there's an extra one in there. So, so it's five? It would be five, yes. Oh, boy. Oh. Yep, we have these would... that, as soon as you step on them, they move. And you may have to follow them throughout a bit of the stage. Oh, this game does come up with interesting concepts. I'm trying to think one of the first platformers they did like an auto runner thing. I mean, I can't think of any successful ones. I was gonna say Sonic, but that's more you just fling along and run on high speed. Yeah, that's more of a moment. It's not really thing. like something that's like forcing you to run. And you basically just have to jump or duck to avoid things. I don't think any of the early Mega Man games did it. No. Unless you want to count the... The vehicle auto stage? Auto-scrollers or whatever. There is the one stage of Mega Man 5. That's more like a vehicle segment. I guess those in a way were some of the earliest auto-runner stages. Um. Oh! They have amazing all these levels! So right on the platform underneath that, when you get there... stage! <laughs> I forgot about this one! <laughs> oh, this game's so mean! <laughs> Why, Nintendo? Why? Uh, yeah, I guess vehicle seg segments probably are like the first ones of those to do that. It was taking for a ride. You just have to jump and react to things. I mean, that would essentially be what auto-scrollers would tend to be, hurdy dirt. Yeah, auto-scrollers are basically the first concept of that. It's just auto-runners, you have even less control, you're just basically running at max speed, and all you can do is jump, or attack, baby, whatever, or slide, whatever. Sadly, one of the first ones that comes to my mind is, uh, the original Rayman. I think the last stage. It basically, like, the last stage had a lot of weird concepts that would fuck with your control. And like the uh, last stage. Oh, you know the bottom platform underneath. And that's probably keeps the platform alive too, which is fucking awful. That blooper. <laughs> so how do I do this? Okay, it looks like once you get to that segment, you want to get off the platform and go underneath it on the bit of ground. Yeah, you want to go down there. Or... Oh, wait, there might be a warp pipe you have to enter. It loops. That's what it is. This place loops. You might have to find a warp pipe to get into, like that one. That's what it is. That's right. I was trying... I thought this was... I thought this came up in uh, World 8, but nope. This is the first of these stages. Basically, you're going an endless loop until you find a warp out of here. Or a warp pipe to get you out. So yeah, okay, you want to jump there, then use the Koopas to get up there. You just have to time your jumps off them so you actually get a high jump. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the right pipe. Because none of the others, I think... One might lead you to another, like, bonus area, but I think it would lead you back here anyway. Yep. And now just go in, go to the bonus area, and you should be able to get to the end of the stage. I know World 8 has a stage similar like this. Except it actually has a warp pipe at the end that takes you back to earlier in the stage. So now we have the next segment! I don't think there's another one of those you have to do in this stage. Now it's a regular stage after that, but yep. Be on the lookout for that shit! Oh, Dick! 
Well, you want to test your Blackberry Mind a Mario game? You certainly got it! I love it! <laughs> I love Mario games! I love platformers that take away your control and make you move in different ways. It's not just making you move left instead of right. At least I feel like I have a reason to actually want to try and get better than something like Sticker Star. Hey, yo. We're actively playing your game feels like a waste of fucking time. Just get all the money you can to buy all the stickers. That's not fun! Especially since all the stickers you get are shittier than the ones that you get in the... Ugh. I'm so glad Color Splash did a quantity-based freaking inventory system and not an RE4 inventory system. That is based on how many cards you have, not how much space you can fit! I mean, oh. it's not like it... It's not like you can get a dead game in that game, apparently, but even then... Oh, it's Sticker Star? You can't get a dead game, apparently. Yeah, you... It, if you run out of stickers, you have to block attacks to get more. So dumb. It's probably the same for Color Splash, but... Again, the inventory system most likely alleviated that problem. But even then, it's like, congratulations, you're fighting to get money to buy stickers that are probably shittier than all the things that you get in the field, so what the fuck's the point of fighting at all? But you can also buy things, so you, you can also buy those things had you originally found them, so you don't have to go out in the field to get them. At your convenience, but it costs money. <laughs> but you also need to know where the fuck to get the thingies. Yep. You want to find all of them and get all of them put in your little picture book or whatever the fuck they have there, the collecting thing, collection thing? Sounds like a waste of time. You're right. All you get is a character roll out of it. It's not worth it. Ugh. I hate that I'm gonna make myself play that game again before I get to Paper Jam. Oh, nice! Don't get yourself a runoff. Nice. Okay. Alright. Alright, just a running jump. Alright, you did it. Woo! Was it bad once you realized you had hit a warp pipe to get out of there? Yeah. Right. So into the overworld and not a Bowser stage, you have to find a warp pipe. I remember that. I think this is the first of these castles that gets really bad. I think. Oh, yeah. This one's pretty rough, if I remember. The poto boos are horrible. And the fire bars. And the running jumps. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if these are the stages you died the most. Because, fucking Bowser's Castle. And his minions want you to die painfully. Ah! It's also that almost looked cool. That almost did look pretty good. There's also a mushroom in that block, I think. You like, have gonna, like that mushroom's gonna save me. Let's be real here. Ow! Oh, you just need to get around two fire bars to get it. I love how dickish they make it, so you have to get the mushroom around death traps. It's the best. Well, speaking of games I could play, I did notice that freaking Dead No More Heroes 3 came on Game Pass recently. Ah, uh, yeah. So I could play that if I wanted, but I'd still have to play one and two! Yeah. I don't know if they're available on the other consoles other than Nintendo yet. The only way you can play the first game I know is they have the special Paradise Lost. Which you need the 360 version for, yeah. Yeah. Which basically just has half the bosses from uh, 2 or whatever anyway. It has some special unique stuff, but oh. I don't think it's all that worth it from what I've heard, so. Right. Really, the best way you're going to play it is the. Didn't they remaster those games a while back? I'm trying to remember if they Nowhere did. Heroes 1 and 2? I feel like they did, but I could be wrong on that. They had the Switch versions. That's what I was thinking of. I, I don't know if those are on Xbox or PlayStation. That's what I'm wondering. Because I know 3 debuted on Switch and then went everywhere else. I would feel like 1 and 2 have to be on there. I just haven't looked. I would say it wouldn't be worth playing 3 without playing 1 and 2. Yeah. So the fact that you put it on Game Pass and not the other 2 just feels bizarre. Even though technically, I guess, well, No More Heroes 1 showed up on both the other consoles. Right. Wait. The special version of 1 was on Xbox. It's on PlayStation 3. Oh, it was on PlayStation 3. It was only on Xbox 360 in Japan. That's right. Yeah. That's right. It was on PlayStation 3 everywhere else. No More Heroes 2 was 
a Wii, and now it's still Switch, I guess, exclusive. No one here is a weird game series. Yeah, it's interesting, though. Travis Touchdown is a very <laughs> interesting character. At least he's a very likable character. <laughs> he's likable in the way that you can relate to him. Yeah. It feels like they never have relatable characters in games anymore. Or when they make it relatable, it's like the gameplay stinks. It's all about the story, trying to make you relate with the character and not really focus so much on the game. Yeah. That's why I'm usually not the biggest proponent when it comes to story in games, because it's like, that's great. If your story's good, I can just look it up online. And probably yeah. get the same effect. It can help a game be memorable, though. It can, oh, encourage you to want to play the game as well. It can. The problem is that, by that logic, it's like, the more you sell me on that, it's like, you're basically telling me your gameplay sucks. Yeah, they, can, they can't focus a little too hard on that. Like, you focus too hard on the story and characters so much that, essentially, the main gameplay was kind of just... Like, um... Sh overshadowed by it, and it kind of just makes me bring up the question, is there a point to playing this game? Yeah. Because that's sort of what happened with... So that's, like, The Last of Us is a pretty good example of that. Where... A lot of talk is just... Like, guess in the case of The Last of Us, it's more of a case of... It's also the same with Majora's Mask, it's just, I don't like that gameplay loop. Yeah. In the case of The Last of Us, it's like, it's a stealth game, and I've just never really been big on stealth games to begin with. Yeah. Whereas with Majora's Mask, I don't like dealing with the overarching, uh, time loop thing, and having to reset the time, and, oh, guess what, you fucked up for getting to do something in day one, guess what, you gotta go all the way back to the beginning. I don't care if there's any real... <laughs> nice way to do it, just, I... That doesn't sound fun to me. Yeah. Like, I don't give a shit about the story and characters, because that's why I see multiple playthroughs talking about every single story and every single side quest, so if you yep. want to give me that argument, guess what, I've already fucking seen it. But if that's the only argument that you have to tell me your game is good, then... To me, I don't think your game's worth it. That'd make because... You, that would make you think you'd really love roguelikes. <laughs> Where it's nothing but gameplay and the story sprinkle in every once in a while. Also depends on the roguelike as well. But then it might also, yeah, it could be to the point that I mean, one of the, the, one of the games the I over but play a lot on Steam is called Crab Champions. There's no fucking story at all. You're literally just in a oh, in a fucking sandbox arena. The third person shooter is just trying to go through arenas. Oh. Like, there's no story at all. It's just the raw dog third person gameplay. It's fun as hell. I yeah, have this like, game just has an intro and then it's just like, alright, like, go. I have like 260 hours in that game. Just have a prologue and it tells you the story of the world of the game. It's like, alright, go. It's like, not even oh, that. It's just right. like... Oh, just, no, just you're dropping the world. It's like, alright, let me... No, like, there's no story. It's just you're a fucking crap trying to... Right. Get, uh, just basically beat the game. It's like, go, let's go. Like, well, right. it's, it's nice that there are games that their stories can basically be so simple. It's literally just... It's literally just the gameplay is the story. <laughs> it's just like, yep, that's what like, you are. There's no story. It's just Survive. the fucking game. <laughs> It's like, you're trying to get to the top, there's nothing else, there's no real story to it, it's just, win. Yup. Here's the story, you fucking need to win. Oh, nice! How do you win so easily? Cause <laughs> I'm good. Scrub. That's right, the princess is mine! Ow! God damn, what the hell are you doing in there? I don't think I wanna know. Just put me in the direction of the next castle, let me out of here. Thank you. 